in the Mass Effect universe starship travel is somewhat overshadowed by the mass relays. Massive structures that generate corridors of ultra low mass to enable ships to travel across the galaxy near instantaneously given the distances involved. I did a relatively recent video here on the channel on the mass relays and we've had other videos from the Mass Effect universe covering things like Element Zero and a most detailed breakdown of the Normandy. I implore you to take a look at those. But today we're focusing a little closer in on starships in general from the Mass Effect universe because like I said generally speaking their travel is overshadowed by the mass relays themselves which means the very fact that these ships are faster than light capable is often entirely overlooked and thus we don't really get a true appreciation of what marvels of engineering and physics these ships really are. So today we're going to do exactly that. Roll the intro. Welcome back to Installation 00 and today we're jumping into the Mass Effect universe to get a feel for how Starship faster than light drives actually function. So let's waste no time. FTL drives are devices which allow ships to travel at FTL speeds through space. FTL drive cores work by exposing element zero to electric currents, creating mass effect fields. It reduces the mass of an object such as a Starship to a point where velocities faster than the speed of light are possible. With a mass effect drive roughly a dozen light years can be traversed in the course of a day's cruise without bending space time and causing time dilation. The FTL drive of a ship refuses to fire if a significant object is in the path of a planned jump. Removing this safety mechanism is nigh impossible because it is inherent to the FTL warm up process. Cynical intelligence analysts note that the safety system was attributed to the Protheans whose technology was attributed to the mass relays. However one method to bypass the safety mechanism is to install an improvised FTL plotter with an archaic design no longer used in Citadel space as has been demonstrated in the Valum Blast on Tatrus. The skill set required for bypassing the safety features is noted to be like finding a particle physicist who can also build a train. The precise maximum speed and the time this acceleration can be maintained varies depending on the exact type of FTL drive being used. In general, the larger the drive, the longer the ship can run at FTL. When travelling across space, thrusters are applied in one direction for the first half of the trip, then the thrusters are reversed for the second half of the trip in order to reach appropriate speeds for arrival. In 2185, Commander Shepard can have a conversation with Marab on this particular point, stating that several people who travel in space forget that the ship must be slowed as much as it was accelerated hence it will start being slowed halfway to its destination. Ket starships use FTL drives with a radically unique design. When travelling across smaller regions such as a star cluster these drives function almost identically to Milky Way drives but over longer distances they function like Alcubier drives. This is similar to having an onboard mass relay but compared to actual mass relays Ket drives are both slower and extremely inefficient. Travelling between clusters is still arduous enough that the Ket rely on their own arc ships and stasis tech for such voyages. Element Zero FTL drives accumulate a static electrical charge when a vessel has been in FTL flight for some time. This charge steadily increases with the amount of time a vessel spends in FTL. Eventually, it must be discharged. The safe method involves discharging into a planet's magnetic field for large ships incapable of planetary landings or actual surface contact in the case of smaller vessels. Space stations and similar structures which are not located near planets are usually equipped with their own discharging facilities. The Citadel has dozens of these. If the drive charge cannot be discharged, it will eventually accumulate to the point at which it discharges into the ship's hull. The heat will fry everything inside, fusing the bulkheads, destroying the electronics and killing all the crew members. Light travels slower through glass than it does through open air. Light also moves slower in conventional space than it does in a high speed mass effect field. 
this causes refraction. Any light entering a mass effect field will change in angle and be separated into a spectrum. Objects outside the affected ship will appear refracted. The greater the difference between the objective, exterior and subjective, interior speeds of light, the greater the refraction. As the subjective speed of light is raised within the field, objects outside will appear to redshift, eventually becoming visible only to radio telescope antennas. High energy electromagnetic sources normally hidden to the eye become visible on the spectrum. As the speed of light continues to rise X-ray, Gamma ray and eventually cosmic ray sources become visible. Stars will be replaced by pulsars, the accretion disks of black holes, quasars and gamma ray bursts. To an outside observer a ship within a mass effect drive envelope appears to have blue shifted. If within a field that allows travel at twice the speed of light, any radiation it emits has twice the energy as normal. If the ship is in a field of about 200 times light speed it radiates visible light as X-rays and gamma rays and the infrared heat from the hull is blue shifted up into the visible spectrum or higher. Ships moving at FTL are visible at great distances though their signature will only propagate at the speed of light. According to engineer Adams the SSV Normandy's stealth system does not work at FTL speeds because that blue shifts the ship's emissions into frequencies too high to capture in the hull sinks. The exact FTL speeds at which Milky Way and Andromeda starships travel are largely unknown. It is noted however that Reapers are believed to be capable of travelling nearly 30 light years or 283.8 trillion kilometers within a 24 hour period and that this rate is roughly twice what Citadel starships are capable of travelling. This equates Reaper FTL capabilities to around 10,957 times the speed of light. In comparison by 2165 human starships are known to be capable of travelling at least 50 times faster than the speed of light 14,989,622,900 meters per second or approximately 0.14 light years in 24 hours. The Andromeda Initiative arcs are capable of traversing 2.5 million light years about 23.6 quintillion kilometers in 634 years putting their FTL capabilities to about 3,900 times the speed of light which by any estimation is an incredible velocity. So although the mass relays are present in the Mass Effect universe and make for a more convenient cross galactic transportation method, even if the mass relays were never discovered or never present in the Mass Effect universe or indeed the canonical destroy ending at the end of Mass Effect 3 stands true. In the absence of the mass relays the various species of the citadel races would still be more than capable of traversing the galaxy and continuing to expand their respective empires. Now we just have to hope that when we do actually land on Mars we discover something like element zero. Cause that would be something. And until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video consider hitting the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Be sure to like the video if you did and pop a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons Spartan10148 the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Sylphia, Mikhail, Ashley, Jordan and Esoteric Sight, my dutiful monitors. Darian, Legions Lost, Lab Rat, Spartan0137, Jacob Kemp, Sean, Element Zero, J3, Mr. Keys, Gungslinger, Evermore, Personal Devil, Aldeas, Toxic, Scion Esports, Gem, Saber and Relentless, my diligent submonitors, my fleet of strato sentinels, my loyal enforcers and all other patrons who continue to support the channel. If you want your name on the end of the video and some perks earned along the way head over to Patreon and consider supporting the channel yourself. Big shout out to my tier 0 transcendent YouTube members Spartan137, Jacob Kemp, Talia, Fenrir, Bornstella, Jimbo and Balaz and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy with a special mention to the accursed hunter. Shout out to John due to the mathematical formula used to determine the area within a pentadodecahedron. <laughs> Oh and Lena because that sandwich. And <laughs> remember there are tons of ways to support the channel and keep my installation pumping out content at a breakneck speed. Much love to you all, take it easy everyone and find peace in the domain. <laughs>